Today, we're gonna to talk about four things that will help you become a better astrophotographer. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna talk about is stop obsessing over gear. As astrophotographers, sure, we get aperture fever. There's always a bigger telescope, a better mount, better filters, better camera but you've got to stop obsessing over your gear. There's always gonna be something better out there. Astronomy dealers are constantly upgrading stuff, making newer versions, and you can't get obsessed with all that stuff. It's really easy to fall into the trap of looking at your photos and maybe they didn't turn out quite like you expected. And so the first thing you do is say, well, I just don't have good enough gear. That may not be true. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that gear is not important because it is. Having better gear can help improve some of your photos, but don't blame it all on that. But spending thousands of dollars on top of the line gear does not automatically make you a good astrophotographer. There's a lot of other factors involved. And that brings us to number two, learn to acquire better data. Now, what do I mean about that? Uh, if we're talking about gear and gear is something that you shouldn't obsess over, how can you acquire better data if maybe your gear is not top of the line? The important thing here is to learn the limits of your gear what it can do. Don't expect it to go further than what it was made to do. If you're trying to load a Celestron Edge 14 on an AVX, you can expect bad results. If you've got a DSLR on a Star Adventurer and you're trying to get five minute subs, you can expect bad results. There could be a number of things that's causing your data to not be what you want it to be. And so you've got to learn to be a problem solver. Learn to figure out what's causing the issues where your data is not quite what you want it to be. Maybe your mount's not balanced properly. Properly. Maybe your camera settings aren't quite right. Buying new gear doesn't always have to be the solution. And one last thing about this, don't be afraid to throw out bad sub exposures. If you're looking at your data, even maybe 50% of your, of your photos have got oblong stars and they're not round, throw them out. Sometimes it's really hard to hit that delete button because you feel like you've wasted a lot of time. But I promise you, if you take your data, you look at it, you throw out the bad subs, keep the good stuff, then you're gonna be better off in the long run. Number three, get more integration time. There's a phrase I like to use, integration time is king. It's really exciting when you get your gear out there and you acquire about an hour of data. You wanna take it inside and you wanna go get on your computer, you wanna stack it and see what you got. But I promise you, leave your gear out there and just keep getting more and more data. Even if it's not on the same night, even if it takes two or three nights, shoot the same target, get more integration time. And when you think you've got enough integration time, get more integration time. And this relates back to the other thing I was talking about. If you say get 20 hours of data on something and 30% of it turns out to be bad and you throw that stuff out, you're still left with 12 to 15 hours worth of good data. The more data you have for total integration time is going to make processing a lot smoother. You're not gonna have to overstretch your photo. It's gonna help reduce that noise in the background even more. Saturation's not gonna be an issue. You know, we've all seen our photos at times where we didn't get enough data. The noise looks like crap. The colors look terrible and more integration time fixes a lot of those problems. So if you wanna become a better astrophotographer, remember, integration time is king. Number four, our last thing, refine your processing skills. I would say that processing skills are probably 80% of what makes an astro photo good, not the gear. I've seen people take insanely beautiful photos using just a DSLR on a star tracker. And it's because number one, they weren't obsessed over the gear. They learned how to use that gear properly and not push it past its limits. They got plenty of integration time, but most importantly, they knew how to process the photo. Going back to what I said earlier, just because you've spent $10,000 on gear doesn't mean that your photos are gonna look amazing. Because once you get that data into the computer if you don't know what to do with it it's not gonna look good there's not really any particular software that I want to recommend to you I use Pixinsight and Photoshop but a lot of people are happy with with other things there's a lot of options out there but whatever you do pick the software that you like that you feel comfortable with and learn it spend time practicing it get your old data out and practice on it. Get on Google, get on YouTube, get on astrophotography communities on social media. Learn how other people are processing their stuff. Take those techniques and those skills that other people are offering and learn those things. Looking back, I've probably spent exponentially more time learning how to process than 
than anything setting up gear or getting the data. And those processing skills can help you overcome some of the deficiencies that your gear might have. For instance, I've got some filters and they produce some pretty bad halos on the sulfur two and the oxygen three data. And yeah, it sucks, but I've learned how to fix some of those things through the skills I've learned through processing. Here's a couple tutorials if you're interested in learning more about Pixinsight. And I hope you guys have clear skies and don't forget to keep exploring our universe.